fool, but whatever he was, you believed him when he said his kingdom was not earth, didn't you? Now, I don't recall that conversation. You don't recall that conversation. You know what, Mr. Pilate? Why don't you say that again so I can slap a perjury charge on you? You ordered the death of Christ, you and you alone, and then you pawned it off on Jesus' reticence, Judas' impetuousness, the politics of the Sanhedrin, and the rowdiness of the Jewish people. Is that not the case? Pontius Pilate, yes or no? You can go on squawking if you want to. My conscience is clean. What you need to do is take it up with you. Mr. Pilate, were the high priests of Jerusalem authorized to order a death sentence? No, they were not. Was King Herod authorized to issue a death sentence? No, he was not. How about the Jewish people themselves? Were they free to issue death sentences at their whim and fancy? No. One man, Mr. Pilate, in all of Judea, one man alone had the authority to put another man to death. Who was that man, Mr. Pilate? Am I on trial here? Because last time I checked, it was your client, Judas Iscariot, freezing his narrow ass off in the ninth circle of hell. Not me. My client recanted with a remorseful heart and was ignored. Then you need to take that up with them Jews, not me. I mean, this ain't some new theory I'm introducing to you. It's documented. Ain't no Sherlock Holmes Nancy Jew mystery here, lady. Them Jews was campaigners, aren't they? They worshiped a jealous, angry, and vengeful God, and guess what? Surprise, surprise. They were angry, jealous, and vengeful themselves. I never had a problem in Judea. Wasn't caused by some rebel rousing no count Jew. Believe me, sister, you need to talk to them, not me. It's always the Jews, Mr. Pilate, isn't it? Well, it sure as shit was in Judea, Lizzie. You want to know what I really I think that this whole story about you hemming and hawing about what to do about Jesus is just a load of made up crap written by Jewish Christian evangelists seeking to broaden the appeal of the Jesus story to the Roman Empire. There is nothing that we know about you, Mr. Pilate, absolutely nothing that suggests for even a second that you would have even a passing hesitation about putting any Jew to death, let alone a revolutionary figure like Jesus who is being proclaimed the Messiah who entered the city of Jerusalem to crowds of cheering supporters and who had the very next day incited a riot at the temple. You hated your assignment. You hated Judea. And Mr. Pilate, you hated Jews. Hated them. You hated them because they contested you. You hated them because they fought back. You hated them because they clung to their religious beliefs and were willing to die for them. But most of all, I think that you hated them because you knew that they were stronger than you. And I think that that bothered you a great deal. I think, Mr. Pilate, it made you resentful, vengeful, and furious. I think it made you feel small and inadequate. I think it gave you skin irritations and nervous tics. I think it kept you up nights and made you count the days until you could return to the safe bourgeois comfort of Rome. That is what I think. I think, Mr. Pilate, you have been hiding behind historical inaccuracies and outright lies. I think that you are a liar and a fraud. I think that when Jesus spoke before you that morning, you did not see a god or a prophet. You did not see a lunatic or an innocent. You didn't even see a human being. I think that what you saw before you that morning was just one more Jew. And you didn't hesitate. Why would you? You didn't wash your hands, Pontius Pilate. History did it for you. Isn't that true? I think I've had enough. If you were a man, Pilate, you'd own up to the truth. The truth? Whose truth you talking about, Red? The truth is I was made a saint in the Ethiopian church. The truth is I was named a martyr for the Christian church in 348 AD. Now that's a damn truth. A Christian martyr? Did I stop it, girl? I guess that's what they mean about history being a lie we too. A lie? What you know about what's a lie, what's a truth? What you know about my history? All you got to go on is some book written four different ways by four different Jews were being there in the first place. And what do you know about my life after Palestine? What you know about what I might have did or didn't do when I got back home to the motherland? Oh, that's right. You don't know Jack, do you? They didn't write about that part of the story, did they? I'm going to tell you something. You and your presumptuous nature remind me more and more of my ex-wife, Rhonda. <laughs> and believe me, that ain't no compliment. Yes, I met that Jesus boy. Seemed like a fine fellow. He dressed like a hobo and smelled like a goat, but you get a boy shaved in the shower, he'd have been basically all right. And I tell you something else, unlike Judas, that Nazarene boy had character. He didn't come up on me begging and growling, crying like a bitch. He faced me like a man, like a Roman almost. And that impressed me. I was willing to just have him clubbed in the head for a couple of hours, redirect his youthful energy. But the Jews, they wouldn't have him. Now you can say what you want to think what you want to. But them Jews were fixing the picture fit that boy was served up for lunch like chicken in the skillet. And they had numbers on the sales team. 200,000 strong, converging on the city for their high holidays and ready to rush on that drop. I did what I had to do to preserve the damn beast. Why? Because that was my damn job. I did my job. I did my damn job. Now you want to call me a liar? Question my veracity and my character? I am a Roman lady. 100% 24-7. We never close. Underneath my ball is sadly stamped. And that means truth. And that means that my honor is defined.
defined by my truth. And I defy you here and now to produce one shred of evidence to support your wild and defamatory claim. You better check the resume a few times before you start trying to sweep your dirt under a Roman's rug. I am clean like dove and ready for love. <laughs> I live in heaven. Where you live at, girl? <laughs> Thank you. 